The bigger challenge came when we decided to go plastic neutral. So for whatever weight in packaging we sell into the marketplace, we made a commitment to recover the exact amount in weight of plastic, though non-specific. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a great mechanism in the marketplace to recover post-consumer plastic, and then there isn't a great mechanism to recycle it. So we had to be creative, and we wound up uh, talking to our two partners right now. One is the one that builds eco bricks that we use to build our classrooms. So they take post-consumer plastic, mix it with cement and come up with bricks that build our classrooms. And the other one um, is a waste to energy company mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there isn't a, a set path for companies that want to be sustainable. So you really have to kind of carve out a path for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Sunny, on your end, um, yes. you've actually scaled up your farming supply chain systems in a big way. Yeah. And last year you've launched as well a traceability sourcing yes. system. Yes. What sort of progress have you made? Yes. So I think the answer to finding scale is A, through innovation. So in our uh, onion farming and processing operations in California, we have four dehydration facilities. We grow the onions to dehydrate it and supply to people like McDonald's, for example. And over a 10 year period, we have bred an onion variety which has moved its solid content from 12% roughly to about now 26.5%. In the bargain, we have saved 65 million cubic meters of water. We have reduced the land under cultivation for those onions by about 7,600 hectares. And we have saved the company $100 million. In our almond plantations, we are now attaching IoT sensors, dendrometers on the tree trunks, which measures the moisture stress in the trees, but it moves in infinitesimal proportions, not visible to the naked eye, but these sensors can pick it. So we've improved our water usage efficiencies between 15 and 20%. So what your employees and your colleagues are looking at is, is your sustainability uh, philosophy or objectives or vision mm -hmm. rhetoric, or it is really lived in the company in terms of real practical examples of things that you do. So April of 2018, we launched what you were referring to as Olam at Source, which is for all the raw materials and ingredients that we supply to our customers, we give them information on 90 sustainability indicators. And uh, this would include environmental indicators like what was a carbon footprint, what was a waste footprint, what was a mm. uh, water footprint like uh, Dunman was just referring to in his supply chain as well, but also social indicators. Yes. How many farmers, we geotag those farmers, where they're located, how many family members in that household, how many women farmers, or how many gender diversity. But capturing that sort of information across all your supply chains is yeah. going to be costly. It's How much are you going to have to spend on this? About 28, 30 million dollars. How do you all account of a digital for something initiative. like that? So all that everybody sees today is that it is a PNL item and my PNL has been reduced by that. But I believe there's a huge strategic asset and we are deriving three benefits. One, we are deriving the benefit of getting some pricing power with the customer. I'm selling commodity. We all sell the same product with no differentiating attributes. So if you want to get some pricing power in that context, by providing these solutions of traceability and supply chain provenance mm -hmm. and everything else, you're getting some pricing power. We're getting a larger share of his wallet. So if he was buying cocoa from 10 suppliers, mm -hmm. he, and we got a 10% share of his wallet, now he's willing to give us 30% of his business because he's not getting this from anybody else. So we're getting loyalty and customer stickiness as a result. My employees are walking on the balls of the feet. And as a result of my employees getting inspired productivity shoots up to 250%. I don't need to really supervise them. So I think, but I cannot capture this today in my mm. PL, my balance sheet, my cash flow statement. But I know that this is a very, very incredibly valuable strategic asset that is going to drive long-term value for the company and really transform the company. Mm. Really fascinating stuff. Delman on yeah. your end, the Higgs Index. <laughs> You're part of the founding member of the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. You've launched a Higgs Index six years ago to try to measure the footprint uh, in the apparel industry. Yeah. It's still at trial stage. Yes. You're disappointed it's not making much headway? I, More should be done? Sunny said it's all music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> when actually the market, when he has, he can distinguish um, his, his company from other supplies mm -hmm. of, of goods, um, the, the, the truth in the apparel is currently, it, it, we are not there yet. Um, we do our sustainable effort. 
the brands and retailers hear what we do, um, but when it comes to pricing, sustainability is rarely a part of it. Why is that the problem? F for me, it's because consumer, they want to buy sustainable clothing. But if you were to go out today, tomorrow, to buy a shirt, how do we don't know where to find sustainable brands and what are the practices behind. So traceability to the whole supply chain in apparel, that's actually one of the aims of the HIC uh, from the Sustainable Apparel Coalition. The HIC is to set a common language for all apparel goods and measure the sustainability impact all the way from farm to um, spinning and weaving to garment manufacturers such as ourselves to the retail stores as well as to the brand practices as well. And then the, the medium term goal, one day hopefully, you, when you buy your clothes, in, you will actually see a sign which has a HIC score. Once the consumer have access to those information and then they will then put the dollar where their heart is. Another inconvenient truth <laughs> is actually we haven't agreed on, on a standard yet. So I, I, HIG Index currently doesn't have a social module yet because there's, we're still will harmonizing. Will it happen one day? Yes, it would. As soon as uh, it, this HIG gets traction, I think the rest will follow. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia. Do check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thanks for watching.